Hello and welcome. I'm Sharon and I will be leading today the last in our Contemplating Christmas series this year. Before we begin, you might like to light a candle to remind us of the light of Jesus coming into the world. Over the previous four sessions this week, our contemplative team has guided us to contemplate upon Advent, the Annunciation, and the responses of Mary and Joseph to that announcement, the experiences of Elizabeth and Zachariah leading to the birth of John, called the Baptist, the journey of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem leading to the birth of our Lord, the angels' announcement to the shepherds, and the visit of the wise men. Today, we look at what the birth of the Christ child brought to those who had been waiting and watching for him. And Emmanuel, God is with us, the incarnation. What does all this mean for us today? So let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, as we look forward with anticipation to celebrating the birth of your Son once again this Christmas time, we offer to you this time of reflection as part of our spiritual preparation for receiving the gift of your Son. May we find you in the words of these contemplations and particularly ask that you speak to us in the silences and by your grace open our ears and help us to listen as you speak into our hearts, our minds and into our lives. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, may you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Well, from the moment she said yes to God's request at the Annunciation, Mary had accepted Jesus would be part of her body for nine months of her young life. Now, she has given birth through the pangs of labour and given God to us in human form. And so Jesus, referred to by St John in his Gospel, as the word made flesh, came into the world, just like you and me, yet not like you and me at all. 
Jesus was born just like each of us, a human baby, but not quite the same as us at all. As in Jesus, the divine was encased in humanity. Thus in Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us for all time. In our reading, we heard that Simeon, an elderly man, a prophet, had been waiting many years for the fulfilment of a promise made to him by the Holy Spirit, that his eyes would see the Messiah. Just imagine, all that time he had lived, anticipating a moment of such fulfilment that it would complete his life. He had prayed in expectation as he waited and waited and waited. Each day, growing nearer to the end of his life, but still holding on to the promise he'd been made. As he left his home one morning, Simeon's heart was racing with expectation as he headed for his place in the temple. Amazingly, he just knew it. Something certain within him knew this was to be the day that God's promise would be fulfilled. There were so many people in the temple. He looked at the faces of those bringing their offerings. He wondered each time, is it him? Is it them? Then out of the crowd came a young couple. The woman was carrying a small child. He realised they had come for the purification ceremony after the birth of a child, as the husband was holding the customary offering of two pigeons. Simeon's eyes were fixed upon the child. He was captivated by him. There was something about him, a presence, and Simeon realised Without any doubt, this babe was indeed the fulfilment of God's promise. As he looked at Mary, he realised she was so young, but nevertheless was compelled to share with her that her son was the promise of salvation and hope. Mary was at first filled with joy. But then Simeon continued by revealing that a sword would pierce her heart. At the time, Mary couldn't have known the significance of those words as she stood that day in the temple cradling her innocent newborn baby. Also in the temple at this time was Anna, a prophetess, who, like Simeon, had been waiting, praying for the coming of the Messiah. And Anna now stood in the presence of this child. She too, knowing her prayers, had at long last been answered. What a special time of blessing this was for all involved in this story. For the day of the long-awaited arrival of the Messiah was here. Even though only the two prophets and the parents were aware of it. For now, that is. These two elderly, faithful people had been praying and waiting practically all their lives. They never lost faith in the promise that God would allow them to see the Messiah before they were late to rest. What an example for us of persistence in prayer. Now, in the next few moments, 
you might want to pause this recording and have some time of quiet reflection. You may like to ask yourself, how do I pray? Do I listen for God's voice? Am I persistent in prayer? Or do I feel God isn't listening and give up? How might I become a Simeon or an Anna? And when you're ready, come back to the recording. Welcome back to the second of today's contemplations. Many of you will have heard that old saying, good things come to those who wait. The story of Simeon, Anna and the presentation of the baby Jesus in the temple is a good example of that. Actually, the coming of Christ involved all manner of waiting on God as we have seen in all we have heard about in this week's contemplations. Waiting on God for his second coming is where we are today. But more of this will be considered in our final contemplation today. For now, we see in this temple a young girl, a dying man, and an old widow, all yielded to waiting on God and giving themselves up to God's will in this way, they had had their lives changed forever. Simeon and Anna had been waiting for years for the fulfilment of God's promise to them that they would see the Messiah. They were content to wait on God's will, recognising this would be in his time and not in theirs. They didn't simply give up when nothing seemed to happen right away, but faithfully prayed and waited, and in doing so, their lives became one of prayerful servants of God in his temple. Their reward was to receive what they had been promised before their lives ended. Anna's name means grace, and this is a story all about grace, God's grace. Mary and Joseph and Simeon and Anna were graced by God, as Luke reminds us as this is a story of God's free gift of self to us through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, we're shown that God fulfills his promises. In the Old Testament, of course, we read that God made various promises which all pointed to Jesus' coming. And among these, God promised Moses that a prophet would come who would be unlike any other prophet. That through David's line, a son would reign forever. God told Isaiah a son would be born of a virgin and he would be called Emmanuel, God with us. And the prophet Micah, said the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. These are but a few. But one night, over 2,000 years ago, all the Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled. The Word became flesh in a baby born to Mary in Bethlehem. In that baby lay God's promise his gift of salvation for us all. If we can but accept it. K. 
can we give up our will to his, take on Christ as our shield, forming us into the people God wants us to be. In doing so, it won't mean we will be free from life's difficulties or that we will never suffer illnesses or other people's condemnation or cruelty. We have Jesus' life and death as our example of what can happen even to the people closest to God. However, if we persevere in faith, God will be merciful to us and knowing him will bring us great joy as we celebrate his presence in our lives, lives that will never be the same again. For ultimately, we have the promise made to all his followers the promise of being heirs with Christ to the kingdom of God. To enable the fulfilment of that promise, that special gift for each of us, we must be faithful like Simeon and Anna. We must continue to pray with faith, without doubt, and wait patiently, remembering that however long we have to wait, the fulfilment of his promise to us will be in his time, not ours. Never doubt, God is still at work, but he works in a different time zone to us and knows what is best for us. And now, you have another opportunity to pause the recording and spend a few moments in reflection on all that you have heard so far. It might help you to consider whether you have patience to wait on God. When have you prayed for something but your prayer has been answered in an unexpected way? Do you thank and praise God for your blessings? When you're ready, come back for our third and final contemplation today. This is the last of our contemplations for this year and I welcome you back. Advent begins the countdown to the celebration of the birth of Jesus on the 25th of December which we do each year. Of course we don't know that this was the actual date, however Jesus was born and this is the day we celebrate the Incarnation, the presence of God in human flesh, in our world. As St John in his Gospel put it, in the beginning the Word already was. The Word was in God's presence and what God was, the Word was. Jesus is that Word of whom John speaks. He is one with God and God with him. This is what we call the incarnation, God coming to us in human form. To us normal human beings, the incarnation is a mystery we cannot fathom. That somehow God, who is beyond all our knowledge, Anything we can describe or understand was in this tiny baby we know as the Christ child. He grew and was cared for by Mary and Joseph until that time as a man he was directed to take up his mission on earth. His mission was to allow something of God to be seen 
something of God to be understood, to draw us into fellowship with him. You would think it a wonderful thing to do, but as it turned out, it was such a difficult mission and he suffered, just as many of, of us suffer, but even more so because men did not believe his message. Jesus was tortured and crucified on a cross, a cruel death. And if we are to be true followers, if it is asked of us, we too must be prepared to give ourselves up to ridicule and contempt, even to torture and death, as experienced by many martyrs, even today, and yet be prepared to be merciful and forgiving. Through the life of Christ, God knows what it is to be human. He knows our limitations, and yet he is limitless. He knows what it is to be open to temptation, yet he is without sin. He knows what it is to be subjected to cruelty, and yet still to be merciful and loving. God in human form, how can we understand or explain it? No one can. As I said, it's a mystery. God is with us in more ways than we can begin to explain or understand. We wait on God to reveal all to us, as he will no doubt do in his own time. All we have to do is give ourselves up to him to continue to pray in faith as we wait on him. So we come full circle from the beginning of our contemplations today. This mystery reminds me of that children's song which goes something like, so high we can't get over it, so low we can't get under it, so wide we can't get around it, God's wonderful love. He loves us so much, he came to us himself in Jesus. Each Christmas we celebrate his coming, Advent is the opportunity to wait, to pray and to expect him to come again to us. This is what Christmas is about, expecting him to be close, whatever circumstances we face in life. And the manner in which he came among us that first Christmas shows that our expectation of his presence is not wild fantasy. Jesus is our precious gift from God, our Father. And Jesus is a gift not just for Christmas, but a gift we can go on unwrapping year after year after year. So I say to God, for all that has been, thanks. And for all that is to come, yes. Now again, you might like to have a moment of quiet reflection before turning the recording on again for our closing prayers. During your quiet time, it may help you to consider what if anything has touched you over the contemplating Christmas series. What is your response to the precious gift to you of the Christ child, Emmanuel, God with us?
And when you're ready, come back for our prayer time. Welcome back. On behalf of our team, I thank you for sharing this week with us, which we hope has given you some food for thought for Advent. And I now welcome you back for a time of prayer to conclude our time together. You may, at this point, like to light a candle and focus on the light as we give thanks to God for being with us as we made this Advent journey in faith together. Advent is a time of expectation, of waiting. And so as we wait on our Lord, we offer him our prayers. Lord, we pray in faith that you hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you sent Jesus into the world, that we should understand even a little of how much you love us. Lord, we pray for your hand to be placed upon all those areas of the world where there is conflict at this time. We particularly pray for Bethlehem, that little town which you chose for such a momentous event in all our lives, and for the Christians there and around the world who practice their faith in the midst of hostility. We pray in faith that you hear our prayer. Lord, you know our world needs you at this time. We are all waiting to celebrate the birth of your son, but also waiting for the time when the COVID-19 pandemic comes to an end. And we are set free from the restrictions we face. Lord, your world needs your healing. Touch it and us at our very point of need. Free us from all that is sent to harm us and to help those suffering to find you there with them in the midst of their troubles. We pray in faith that you hear our prayer. As we prepare to celebrate Christ's coming again this Christmas and await in faith his coming again, help us over this Advent period to let go of the list of all we still have to do. Put down the burdens that we carry. Let go of the distractions one by one every tension every anxiety every concern help us good lord to give up our wills to yours and so relax our hearts and minds knowing that you are in charge of our lives. We pray in faith that you hear our prayer. Lighten our darkness, we beseech you, O Lord, and by your great mercy, deliver us from all the perils and dangers of this life. Bring us the light of Christ to lighten our path to you. We pray in faith that you hear our prayer. In the stillness, 
we accept that you, Lords, are always the same, always working in human history and always coming. You are merciful and full of compassion and by your grace gave us Jesus to be our Saviour. So we say, Lord Jesus, come to us. Come with burning fire. Come with healing. Come with peace and joy and love. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We pray in faith that you hear our prayer. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be ours this Christmas and always. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.